Hello and welcome everyone to Redstone for Beginners with one Fred Jones. So before we get started here in our first lesson, I just want to talk about the series a little bit. This series is going to be for people who want to understand what they're building in Minecraft with their redstone. So we're going to go through, it's going to be pretty detailed. We're going to talk about all the different things that redstone does. And every episode is going to be more and more in depth. Um, so saying that, starting out in this episode, we're just going to do these simple things. We're going to talk about buttons, we're talking about levers, pressure plates, redstone torches, tripwire hooks, um, redstone blocks, comparators, um, daylight sensors, and we'll probably do at the end a little bit with repeaters. So, like I said, we're going to do everything step by step, start at the beginning, so that you guys understand what we're doing with our redstone. Now, if you're looking for a tutorial on how to build something, there's a thousand tutorials out there that show you how to build stuff and they're easy to follow. The guys do a really good job with that stuff. If you want to go find something to build, then you know go do that. That's not what we're doing here. We're trying to learn how to use redstone, trying to learn what it does and how, you know, once we know how it works, then we can build our own things. We can invent our own contraptions, um, adapt things to our world the way that we want to adapt them. So that's what we're doing here. So let's get started. Okay, like I said, the first thing we're going to talk about is buttons. So you've got wooden buttons and stone buttons currently in the game. Now that's not just for decorative purposes. You're wooden button gives you a longer pulse than does your stone button and I'll demonstrate that now. So pay attention to the redstone lamp in the background. Pay attention to how long they stay on. Now, as you can easily tell that the wooden button gives you a longer pulse. It stays on longer than the stone button. It comes in handy with um, iron doors and things like that. Then you've got your lever which just gives you a, a solid signal. Uh, it's just like a light switch in your house, only difference is down is not off, down is on. As you can tell it's now in the down position and our light is on. So unless we invert the signal between here and that lamp, up is off, down is on. Easy enough? Okay, so pressure plates. Again, like the button, you have two different varieties. You have a wooden variety and a stone variety and just like the the buttons there's a reason for that and it's not just decorative purposes so as most of you probably know you stand on a pressure plate you get a redstone signal I'm gonna shut that off same thing with the stone you stand on a stone you get a redstone signal and it will stay on as long as you're on the pressure plate here's the difference notice I just dropped, you can't really see them, items on the wooden pressure plate and we're getting a signal. Now if we do the same thing to the stone pressure plate, they're on there, but we're not getting a signal. So that's the difference with your wooden and your stone pressure plates. The wooden one will accept, will be triggered by items and your stone does not. Pretty cool. Now these are weighted pressure plates. Now the gold one is light and the iron one is heavy. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail with these yet because Mojang's planning on changing the way that they act, but we are going to talk about them a little bit. If you'll notice, when we stand on it, that little bit of redstone right there is illuminated, but it's not enough to get over to our lamps. And it's the exact same for this one. We got one piece of redstone eliminated, or eliminated, illuminated, but it's not enough to get to our lamp. So this is Mojang's or Minecraft working out analog redstone. So the way these work is the more items you get on these, the more signal you get out of them. So a player will only activate one on either of these. I'm not exactly sure what you need. I think a st if you throw a stack on the lighted one you might get two. I don't remember exactly how it works and I haven't tested it either. Of course the reason why I haven't messed with them is because Mojang is going to change the way these things act 
and uh, make it easier for us to use. So those are pretty cool. So next thing most of you guys probably know about, your redstone torch. Oop, I lost him. So your redstone torch is one of the most popular ways of getting a redstone signal. Of course, anytime you place it, it's on. Um, we're going to mess around with that some more in the next episode. But as you can tell, whenever you got a redstone wire connected to it, it will give you a redstone signal. So the next thing we got is tripwire hooks. Now it requires two of these to work. I got one on that block and one there, and they must be connected with string. Now you can't have them any closer than I do right here. I think you can spread them out quite a ways, but you can't have them any closer than this right here. You gotta have at least one piece of string in between them. And if you'll notice, I stand here, I trip them, it's on, I move off, they're off. If I run through, it only stays on for a second. So those are pretty cool. They be a lot of different uses for tripwire hooks. So, and we'll get into that, of course, in another episode as well. So another great thing that Mojang has recently added is the redstone block. Now the redstone block always gives you a redstone pole, a redstone signal. So you're kind of wondering, why do we have a block that takes nine redstone to make when we've got the redstone torch that requires one stick and one piece of redstone? Well, we'll get to that in a second, but it does basically the same thing as your redstone torch does. There is a difference, so we'll show that to you in a second. So then here, we've got the comparator. Now our comparator will check inventory of whatever it's next to, and it will give you a redstone signal based on, just like the pressure weighted pressure plates over there, we get an analog signal out of it. Now it's based off of how many items are in the chest or the hopper or the furnace or whatever it may be. So right now we're not getting any signal out of it. So let's put in 64 redstone. Now we got a little bit of a signal. Now let's get, let's fill this chest with, with redstone, shall we? Let's see, put all these in here. Let's see if we can't turn on that lamp. And we have. So let's see what it takes. We'll take one stack out. Lamp still on. Take two stacks out still on. Now of course this is of not really demonstrating this to its full potential but this redstone signal if we stretch it out as far as redstone will travel then we could really tell what's going on here but this is just a short demonstration take that one out lamp still on take that one out lamps off so this is telling us that it takes three stacks to power two redstone wires to there. Let's put another stack in there and as what's happening is the signal makes it all the way to here which is powering that block which powers our redstone lamp. So those are pretty cool. There's a lot of cool things we can do with those too. So we'll talk about those more in a later episode. Okay so now let's talk about this redstone block again. Redstone block running over running a wire redstone block with a wire running over to our redstone lamp. Now, something you can't do with the torch is push it with the piston. And you can't pull it back with the piston either. So there's a big difference between the redstone torch and your redstone block. This is a really, really great thing that Mojang did. And uh, it's actually helped to compact a lot of redstone contraptions in the game. So. It works just like a redstone torch, only difference is we can manipulate where it is in the game. Pretty cool. So then the next, or the last thing we're going to talk about today is your daylight sensor. So here we are, it's pretty much midday. Where's the sun at? Okay, the sun is going down. We'll go ahead and try this now before the sun gets any lower. Now, that doesn't seem right. That shouldn't work like that, should it? How could knocking or busting out one piece of sandstone turn that lamp on? Let me show you. With our daylight sensor. 
and we may have timed it just right because as the sun goes down you'll get to see how the daylight sensor works. Now it also gives you an analog signal just like our uh, comparator and our weighted pressure plates. So the darker it gets the less of a redstone signal it's going to put out here. Notice that we just lost one. We'll lose another one when the sun goes down a little bit further. Any time now. There it is. There it went. So, so on and so forth. Now, if we wanted to, let's see if I'm fast enough. Oh, my bad. Throw in a, a repeater there with just a little bit of light, just enough light to set one off, we can then turn that into a full length signal. But again, once that sun goes all the way down, it should kill the signal. Let it get completely dark. There, it's completely dark. Oh, I did that. It went off at the same time, but now that it's completely dark, the daylight sensor doesn't give us any signal at all. That's pretty cool. Shut that one off. So, just real quick, let's go over repeaters. Now, repeaters are basically something that you use. I mean, there's more uses than this, but for right now, all we're going to talk about is what they do, what they're probably one of their most useful functions are. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so 15, got 15 blocks of redstone. Now, if you'll notice, redstone's not animated right there. So that's where it ends. That's as far as it will go, 14 blocks. Now, if you throw a repeater in there, you will get another 14 blocks. So hence its name, it's repeating the redstone signal. And it allows you to run wires a very long ways. As long as you keep putting in these redstone repeaters every 14 blocks, you can run this wire all the way until the chunk unloads. So that's pretty cool. So that's everything for today. Next episode, we're going to talk about pistons and hoppers and um, dispensers all the cool things like that. And uh, I hope you learned something today and thanks for watching.